just what I mean. You Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask any question you want to, and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you know y'all can send it directly on Patreon. Uh, you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids, and if you don't, Trust me, it's all good. Uh, I love y'all. We got some great, great, great questions like always. Let's start off with the big man. And I ain't talking about me. The first question came from BB. He said, I just want to start by saying I appreciate this channel and the Team Keep It Clean family. I appreciate you. Uh, he said, bro, Ravens got to be thinking about trading up to get Jordan Davis. With the defensive line as it is in rebuild mode this offseason, he would be a serious plug-and-play player. Ravens have the draft capital to make this happen. There is no excuse this upcoming season. Uh, so you think they would have to trade up to get him? I don't know. He, um, I Like this question, when I first saw it, I was like, all right, it's time to watch some film. Um, so literally this morning, uh, what was today, March 8th? Yeah, this morning I was up watching film on Jordan Davis. And I'm going to tell you all what I saw. Uh, first, let's get into his measurables, though. Uh, six six. 340 pounds that's a big boy that's a that's a big boy he make me feel small that like i'm thinking like if, if i'm a, a defensive player on georgia whether i'm on a d-line or i'm a linebacker or even a cornerback or whatever and i'm i'm, I'm in the mix making a tackle and i'm tackling say a running back for example i'm tackling a running back and the running back sort of he's starting to fall down a little bit but he ain't going down all the way i'm holding his legs though so he ain't going nowhere then I see number 99, Jordan Davis, coming running over there to help with the tackle. I'm letting go, and I'm getting up, and I'm running out the way. That is a big guy. Um, he is huge. Now, when you look at his numbers, because before we get into all what, from what I saw on film, let's go over his numbers. Um, 2018, uh, he got one and a half sacks, one and a half tackles for a loss. 2019, he got four tackles for a loss and two and a half sacks, so he upped everything. 2020, he got one tackle for a loss and one sack. 2021, he got five tackles for a loss and two sacks. So when you look at those numbers, it's not anything that's eye-popping. But at the same time, he's a defensive tackle. He's an interior defensive lineman. So you wouldn't expect, like, uh, he's not Aaron Donald. So you wouldn't expect his numbers to be crazy like that. But his impact is what's crazy. So what I saw from him on, uh, on film um, is something that the Ravens have been missing since Lodi Nada. Because with, they, they got Brandon Williams. Brandon Williams was not even, not, not even necessarily the, the Lodi Nada replacement, but he was just the next guy up at interior defensive line. Um, but they have been missing a disruptive guy. In the, not just a run stopper, but somebody who can be disruptive. Uh, in the middle of that defensive line, they've been missing that for a while. Um, of course, they traded for Calais Campbell, but he's on the back end of his career. Um, and he made some plays for sure, but again, he's on the back end. Jordan Davis, uh, obviously a young guy. He would be a rookie. Um, but somebody like him would, in my opinion, do wonders for the defense. Really. Um, and, and I think with Wink, had Wink had somebody like him, then I think Wink would still be here right now or probably be a head coach somewhere. Because with Wink, um, I think one of the reasons why he blitzed so many people, why he would send corners, send linebackers, he would even send coaches on blitzes is because he like, man, I cannot create any type of interior pressure whatsoever. I just don't have the guys to do it. So you know what? I'm sending everybody else. I'm sending everybody else. But if he had somebody that could create interior pressure, it will make such a big difference. Now, um, I'm not saying that Jordan Davis is Lodi Nada. Because, I, nah, I, I don't know about all that yet. Even though I did see some players. Because I watched the film that I watched. I watched games for him against Clemson, Alabama, and Florida. Um, so, and I did see on one, in one of those games, I forgot which one. They had him lined up, like sort of at left tackle. Uh, it was a goal line play, and the running back, they handed it off to the running back, but they had him lined up uh, on the offensive line in that goal line package, and he pushed. Because, I mean, obviously, he's a defensive lineman. He ain't afraid to initiate, to initiate contact. So that's a beautiful thing. Um, but that just really reminded me of Lodi. And, again, we've been missing that. 
And and when you have somebody that a, a good interior defensive lineman, a disruptive one, because we have not had that in so long, but when you have that, it literally makes everybody's job that much easier. That much easier. Your linebackers, they can run a little bit more free. Remember, Ray Lewis was the one that said, he told the Ravens, he said, look, hey, you need to dre- you need to get me some help up front. You need to get me some help up front. What happened? The Ravens got him that help up front with Lodi Nada. It makes his job that much easier because he gets to run free to those quarterbacks. He gets to run free to those running backs. He gets to just be more free in open space, like running like a happy gazelle, gazelle or something. So that made Ray Lewis so happy, and that made all of us happy, too. It was like, oh, let's go. But it could be the same thing for Ravens linebackers, whoever they will end up being in the 2022 season. He also helps with, obviously, the pass rush because this guy is so, just his body itself is just so dominant. It's going to take, if it, when, from the film that I saw, if it's one guy blocking him, uh, every now and then that one guy's going to win. But usually it, it takes two. It takes two. And sometimes there will be three guys blocking him. So it's not going to just be one of those things where, uh, all right, we got two guys blocking him, but you, you can't have two guys blocking every defensive lineman. No. So with him and just his, his size, and, and he actually he can be kind of a little, a little nimble on his feet. He can be quicker on his feet than, than he looks. Because I remember just looking at him, I'm like, whoa, this, this dude, he, he is huge. But then I watched him how he used his hands and stuff, especially on passing downs. I was like, okay, man. I, I, I did not expect that, but I wasn't mad at it either. Um, but he would open stuff up that much more for an Adafi away, for a Tyus Bowser, or Dalen Hayes, or whoever it's going to be uh, on, on, the, uh, on the edge. Uh, that's still to be determined because with Tyus Bowser's injury and Pernell McPhee probably gone. Jalen Ferguson, we'll see what happens with him. And just a lot of question marks there right now. But he would make everybody's job easier. The cornerbacks, the secondary. Again, if you can get pressure, and and think about this too. The pressure is not always just going to come from him, but he can help other guys get pressure too. Because if you have multiple offensive linemen committed to blocking Jordan Davis, then it's like, all right, that will allow somebody else to be one-on-one. Because we saw a lot of times when Adafi away, he would be double teamed. I know I know, y'all remember. Um, but, hey, you, you had to tell Jordan Davis, if they did get him, you, you can't get 99, big fella. Sorry. Even though Jordan Davis would probably look at Adafi away. Like, hey, come up off of that 99. But Adafi away, he big too. He ain't Jordan Davis big. But Adafi away probably be like, no. But, anyway, another story for another day. Um... So he, he would open stuff up for the pass rush, for the pressure from other guys, too. Uh, again, secondary, the cornerbacks, they would not have to cover as long because if Jordan Davis isn't, isn't applying pressure, then it would be being applied from the edge guys. So it just it, it would help everybody out. Now, um, some good that I saw from him. When teams tried to run in his direction, if he was not being double and a lot of times triple team then that run wasn't going anywhere. Even a lot of times when he was being, he was being double team because again, that double team, he takes on those blockers and that lets everybody else eat. Let's everybody else eat. So a linebacker could come free. Another defensive lineman next to him could come and get that, uh, that running back down. It helps so much. Um, some other stuff that I saw from him, uh, just again, the pressure. Oh, Pat on passing downs. Cause that would be a concern of mine. It's like, all right, if you're going to draft a guy in the first round, he ain't about to be no first and second down player. Mm-mm. He, nope. No, no, no. You're not drafting a, a defensive lineman to be a first and second down player and you take him off the field on third down. No. Mm-mm. But I did see him uh, on a lot of passing downs. Saw him on a lot of passing downs, so that was a good thing. And I would think like Ravens would not use a first round draft pick on a part time player. At least I would hope not. Um, so. Yeah, it would be expected that he would be an every down uh, defensive lineman. Um, Some concerns that I would have um, would be what would happen if he if he got thrown off balance or something. 
if he lost his balance, fell to the ground, how quickly could he recover? Now, of course, you, all, you obviously have 10 other guys on the field, too. Um, but how quickly could he recover? Would If he fell and he was down, would that completely take him out of the play? And, I mean, football, the plays, they go by like this. Um, so you can say that really about any player, but with him just being so, like, big, like, huge, uh, how would that work? Um, as far as his recovery... His recovery speed, his, um, what's the best way to put it? Like, if he's, say, for instance, he's rushing, it's, it's a passing play. He's rushing a passer. Um, and he rushes a little bit too up upfield or downfield or whatever. He goes past the quarterback. How quickly can he turn his body and recover to sort of try to make up for all that yardage that he went past the quarterback for? If you get what I mean. I don't know if I explained that right. Um, but that, that's just, just, those would just be my main concerns. Uh, and really my, yeah, my biggest concerns would be how much control would he have over his body? Now, when I watched it from the games that I did watch, I told you it just, it was Clemson, uh, Georgia. I'm not, not Georgia. He plays for Georgia. It was Clemson, uh, the Gators and Alabama. Those are the games that I watched. And, and from those, it did not seem like he had bad body control at all. Um, so it does not seem like the, the body control should be an issue. And then with him going from the coaches at Georgia to NFL coaches and then, of course, being around NFL players, too, that should help him even more. Um, so if if the Ravens were to draft him, I wouldn't be mad. I know I know a lot of people would be mad. There'll be a lot of people that'll be happy. I know my guy, Jake. I know he would love it because Jake is a Georgia guy. But um, I would not be mad because I could see. What they were doing now, <clears throat> my guy BB, he talked about them possibly needing to move up. Um, I don't know if they would need to. I don't know. I would have to take a look at uh, everybody that's picking ahead of them. But for a defensive tackle, unless he just like really, really done like he's just really, really like that. Um, then there will be a possibility. But I, I don't know. I don't think they would really have to move up for a defensive tackle. But again, I, it would depend on who's picking ahead of them. Uh, but, yeah, this would be a draft pick that I would not be mad at at all uh, if the Ravens did pick him um, because it's something that would just, again, makes everybody's job that much easier. And, and I'm all for that. I'm all for making everybody's job that much easier, not making it harder. So, whew, that, that, that dude, he, he is huge, man. He, he, his size on the field is crazy. Uh, his impact on the game is is big so you would just obviously hope that it translates to the nfl as well and you think about it like he's already nfl size it ain't like he's one of these players oh man you got to put on some weight for the nfl no you <laughs> no you you straight you, you you're good now you, you you can match up with nfl offensive linemen all day man so we'll see how it goes next question came from my guy phil and appreciate you being a patron he said in this year's draft i know the main, main focus is to rebuild our offensive and defensive lines along with our secondary now i have seen many mock drafts from sports analysts continually bringing up three certain names center uh linden bomb from iowa uh, offensive tackle pinning uh or pass rusher david ajabu from michigan now engraving if you were baltimore's gm which one of these three would you take uh in the first round um if I had to choose out of those three, I would probably take uh, mm, Lindenbaum, Penning, or Jabo. Uh, I'd probably take a Jabo. Out of those three, I'd probably take a Jabo. Um, and more so with the uh, with the uncertainty of not only Tyus Bowser, but the un this uncertainty of Bowser. Uh, Hayes and Justin Houston and Pernell McPhee. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty there. Now, I know you could easily say, oh, but there's a lot of uncertainty at offensive line. And yes, there certainly is. You would not be lying about that. Um, but I would hopefully have addressed that uh, in free agency too um, and get some guys that like are ready. Uh, and then, of course, there's still the second round too. Like, again, as far as offensive linemen, there's not only one round. Uh, and I know a lot of people are getting caught up in that. And a lot there's been a lot of back and forth like, oh, when the Ravens should take somebody, should take a, uh offensive lineman. And I mean, I feel like you couldn't necessarily go wrong with 
either one of those three, but yeah, I, I would probably say a Jabo. Next question came from my boy Marco, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, what's good, Engraving? Hopefully you and the fam are doing good. Oh yeah, we're doing real good. Appreciate that. Do you think it would be in the best interest of both the Ravens and Lamar to sign a three-year, 45 to $48 million deal? This way, the Ravens can adjust it so the cap hit isn't much. Lamar gets a short but lucrative deal with the potential of signing an even bigger deal after three years. And lastly, Ravens can evaluate their quarterback and money in three years without signing him to a super long, expensive deal. What are your thoughts? Uh, um, with Marco, I, not with Marco, with Lamar. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, with Lamar, yeah, that, that wouldn't be a bad deal because he is, uh, what are you getting ready to be, 25, 26, I think? Yeah. And if he signed a three-year deal, uh, that would, well, it would be a three-year extension, actually. Um, because so it'll be a four year deal because this year is the fourth, fifth year option, and then it'll be one, two, three years after that. Um, so that would allow Lamar to get some good money. Um, that 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 franchise tag money, uh, it would be, yeah, it would be around there. Uh, he would get paid, Ravens would have that quarterback for the foreseeable future, and then, yeah, everybody could run it back in a couple of years, see where everybody is and how everybody's doing. Hopefully, great. Um, but at the same time, I think it all depends on what the Ravens did in this, this offseason, how they draft, who they sign. It, I think so much depends on that. Um, cause with Lamar, I, I think, again, this is my personal opinion. I just don't think he wants to be tied down to the Ravens right now. Um, I think he wants to really, they, they could talk about this vision that they have, but I think he really wants to see it be executed first before he even thinks about approaching them about even having a conversation about this contract. Next question came from my boy Martin, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, Engraven, hope all is well with you and the fam, as well as my team keep it clean fam. Now, I, I know I don't need to say this to Ravens fans, but it always kills me to see journalists Analysts or fans or teams, how little they know of Lamar Jackson. I recently saw that both Max Kellerman and Stephen A. Smith both said that Lamar should not play until he gets his new contract. Lamar has said time and time again, his focus is on the Super Bowl. He is not worried about the contract at this moment. If they would actually take the time to listen to Lamar, they would know this. Instead, they want to be his agents and tell him he should not play for the Ravens until he gets that contract. We all know Lamar Jackson is going to get paid big bucks. The Ravens aren't going to just let Lamar go. Uh, they made Joe Flacco the highest paid quarterback in the league, even though everyone in the NFL knew he was not the best QB. Uh, Flacco is my favorite player, and I knew he wasn't number one. Surely the Ravens knew this. Uh, to my point in saying that if they were willing to make Flacco the highest paid QB, why wouldn't they do the same for Lamar Jackson? Mm, we, we, are, we are really going to see. We are going to see. Um, how this thing shakes out. Uh, and again, um, the Ravens, they, yeah, they are known to cheap on the outside, but not necessarily from the inside. Uh, they will take care of their own. Like they, they just gave Mark Andrews ooh, and they, whew, the timing could not have been better with Mark Andrews deal. Cause had he not gotten paid, th this is why I'm, this is why I always say like, when people say, oh, man, Lamar Jackson, he's crazy for not doing a deal right now with the Ravens. No, he's not. Why shouldn't he bet on himself? Like, Ravens got a deal for Mark Andrews right now. A deal. Had they waited another year? Oh, had they waited another year? Price tag would have been way up. Way up, my friend. And even with Flacco, Flacco, it was the same thing. Flacco, he, he could have took it, taken a deal, and it would have been cheaper than the one that he got. But he's like, no, I think I can get a little more. Let, let, let's wait. Boom. He ended up winning the Super Bowl, bet on himself. It paid off. It paid off. So that's why, that's why I'm not mad at Lamar just waiting it out. He mad at him waiting it out? Like, why, why not? If you, you can be patient and, and you can get even more bread, oh, man. Yeah, like, why not? And there's going to be a lot of, like, analysts and experts and media people. They're going to be talking about the whole agent thing. A lot of fans, too, as you know. I'm sure you see it in different comment sections and whatnot. They're going to be talking about the whole agent thing. Oh, Lamar needs an agent. He needs an agent. He needs an agent. But, again, he, they've been handling business so far and everything been straight. And I'm sure they're going to handle this accordingly and everything will be straight. Um, Lamar has been doing a lot of what he does is different from uh, the norm in the NFL. And a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people don't like it. 
Oh, uh, and I mean Lamar, he got he got enough haters as is. He got enough haters as is. Um, you see him all the time, whether it be uh, on TV, whether on social media, YouTube comment section. I, don't know, I got plenty of them that show up here every every day, every day. Um, but that's that's the nature of the business. He um, when you do things differently from the norm, that's gonna come with it. That's gonna come with it. Um, so with every, everything that you've been hearing from the media, and so, now some of them have made some good points. Some of them actually do. Uh, but some of them just, they, they say some wild stuff. Like even uh, uh, Emmanuel Acho. Oh, man. He, <laughs> he, had, he had some like crazy stuff. I'm sure y'all saw the clip um, where he, he had like RG3, Tim Tebow, Michael Vick. It was like passing yards per rushing yard. It was, it was something crazy. And I'm like, where are we going with this? But he was using that. To say that the NFL is not biased against uh, race with quarterbacks. He said, is it race or ratio? Something like that. But y'all watch it for yourselves so you can have a good laugh too, man. And I, and I, I like um, I like Marcellus Wiley and uh, Emmanuel Acha. I, I, I love their conversations. their back and forth because I always love uh, different analogies that they use. But that one, I, that one that Acho used just, it was not it, man. Um, cause I, I really thought when I first saw the clip, I'm like, okay, he about to go somewhere. But then I kept watching, like, oh no, he didn't, he didn't really go anywhere on this one. But I mean, it is what it is, man. Ain't no big deal. And the last question on this episode came from my guy Ray Sean. He said, "What's up, team? Keep it clean and engraving." I'm relatively new to football. Became a fan in 2018 as it was my first year with the Baltimore Ravens marching band. And getting the chance to go to every home game and haven't missed one since. I cannot get enough of it. Oh, that's what's up, man. He said, "I think I'm now up to speed with the basic knowledge of football, but." I'm still trying to figure out one thing. What is a number one wide receiver? And do you think we have one hidden on our roster? Well, I think with a number one wide receiver, it's however that team possibly creates, uh, creates that number one wide receiver. Not every one, number one wide receiver is going to look the same. They're not going to play the same. But I think with a number one wide receiver, they can be relied upon in every situation. Uh, and, and this is my opinion. They will be a go-to guy. Um, on first, second, and third down, um, if your quarterback's in a bind, then they can always look for that play and be like, all right, you know, I'm going to give him a shot because I know they can really make something happen. And I think right now for the Ravens, that number one wide receiver has been Mark Andrews, even though he is a tight end. But that number one wide receiver right now for the Baltimore Ravens is tight end Mark Andrews. And that's not a bad thing. That's just what it is. But anyway, continuing. Uh, he said, I think everyone has their own idea of what a number one wide receiver is. I, I should have read that first, but yeah, I agree. Uh, to me, a number one wide receiver is, of course, the most reliable target, but also someone that can get you out of a couple of jams. Okay, yeah, I should have read this. Uh, a target that if a play breaks down, you can just throw it up and trust that your receiver will make a play. That's another good explanation. Uh, a receiver that has your back on off days and that will produce on the field no matter who is throwing you the ball and makes an effort to get open no matter the circumstance. Well, Mark Andrews did that. He produced with Lamar, with Huntley, and with Josh Johnson. So shout out to him. Oh, oh I, I should have read it, man. I should have read this whole thing first. I should have read the whole thing first, man. Listen, listen to what he said next. Mark Andrews is a perfect example of a number one wide receiver. <laughs> he said, too bad he's a tight end and we still need that number one guy. But I think we have not have had our number one guy for four years now, but he has not gotten the opportunity to be that guy. And that guy is, drum roll please, Miles Boykin. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He said, Miles is that big body physical wide receiver that we've been asking for, but Lamar and the Ravens have failed to give him a fair opportunity to be that guy for us. I see a whole lot of potential in Mr. Boykin, even though he has had his flaws. Don't give up on a guy before giving him a chance to improve and show his worth. And I just wish that the Ravens and sometimes Lamar would give players more of a shot to show their worth because there's always that hidden playmaker and you will never know a player's worth if you hide them away. Sorry my ADHD took over and I may have went off the track. No, it's all good. That happens to me every single video. So, wow. Miles Boykin. Mm, that could have been something, man. I just, I think it's too late for them now. I don't think that um, Miles Boykin is going to really get that shot uh, at being the Ravens' number one wide receiver. I don't, I don't even think that he's going to be on a team. 
uh, this year. And I, I wish that they could have been more of, more of an opportunity. Um, there were a lot of times when Lamar just didn't even look his way. Didn't even look his way. I know the chemistry was just it was just off. Uh, they were on two different wavelengths. Um, but yeah, Miles he never really gotten uh, consistent opportunities like that. He never got the volume like that. He just never got to see his true potential. Because it would be one thing if Miles Boykin, because I know a lot of Ravens fans, they'll, they'll go off of a couple of passes that went Miles Boykin way. And when there was a uh, just that them being off um, with, between Lamar and Miles Boykin, they'll go off a couple of passes and be like, oh, no, he did have his opportunities. He didn't really have opportunities like that. Because there, there'll be passes that were between Lamar and Hollywood, and they'll be off. He's still going to get his chances. There'll be some passes between Mark Andrews and Lamar, and they'll be off. Mark Andrews still going to get his chances. But Miles, he really didn't. He didn't. So it would be one thing if Miles Boykin, and, and I know every receiver can't all catch 50, 60 passes every season. I, I know that. I ain't saying that. But it would be one thing to be like, all right, Miles Boykin, man, he had so many opportunities. Oh, man, they all went bad. They all, they all went to waste. That would be one thing. And then be like, oh, okay, well, I guess he ain't good. But this whole thing with the Ravens, is, and it happens with so many receivers, we'll never know. We'll never know their true potential because they never really got a shot. It happens. It's been happening for years with the Ravens at wide receiver, for years. And it looks like Miles Boykin is unfortunately going to be a, a part of that continued cycle. Shout out to Graven.